hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day. And today we're actually going to do something magical. We're going to train your snake how to jump through hoops and do rollovers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we are going to teach you how to train your snake to eat what you offer them. In the sense of going from live feedings over to throws and thought and the food items that's the easiest and the most convenient for you and still beneficial to your snake. Um, <clears throat> This little guy came to us, um, she came to us as a live feeder, and she never ate out live with us. Um, it was a little bit of a mission. She took a little bit longer than, than normal. Um, but today, I'm pretty sure if I sent a shoe with a rat, she will even take that. Um, even me approaching the enclosure, she's normally puppy dog tame. Um, she's definitely got a feeding reaction to her. So I'm just going to let it be be happy snake in there we've been getting a lot of requests on uh live feedings what's our viewpoint on it all that the, the first problem with live feedings is there's an animal cruelty act in south africa it's the act 169 of 1993 and that basically stipulates that it's against the law in south africa to feed live so you're looking at a criminal prosecution if you do get caught with that um and they do not take it lightly um beating a dog to death and feeding a rat is the same charge believe it or not let that sink in that's how serious it is um it's a lot more serious than people think um <clears throat> so sharing videos of live feedings on social platforms facebook whatsapps all that uh you're opening yourself up for a world of headaches and trouble um it, it's i would not recommend it so guys if you're doing it uh, you know now, please stop doing that. We need to look after this hobby um, because one guy does it. We all get um, classified in that camp and we don't want that. Uh, we actually want to promote to the world that we're responsible keepers. And in that same sentence, let, let's go into detail about life feedings, the pros and cons. There's, there's actually no pros in, in life feeding. Uh, you feeding a potential prior product and that might have internal and external parasites that could have been eliminated by um, freezing them beforehand. Um, you, 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 you're risking your snake um, to horrible injuries. I'm not going to share images on my channel here, but I can tell you now, if you've got the time and if you've got the stomach, uh, go have a look at what happens to rats um, and snakes that's left over in the enclosure overnight together. It, it's horrendous. Um, snakes can get killed by rats. Um, even mice can inflict serious injury and even kill smaller snakes. Um, so do not go that route. So risk of injury. Besides the risk of injury, you're also um, sitting with um, stressing out your snake um, the entire time that rodent's in there. Remember that rodent it gets introduced to the cage, it smells a predator, in, in, it, it sees a predator, it's going to go, to go two ways. It's going to fight or flight. Initial will be flight. It's going to realize there's no escape um, because you. it's not a natural environment where it can choose whether it wants to. Um, it will choose 100% flight in nature. Um, now you've taken away that, um, that option and you've actually turned potential flight option into a potential fight option. Um, the other thing is you, you've manipulated the system uh, where the snake can choose, do I want to hunt this prey item or do I want to avoid it today? Uh, you've now forced them to be in that environment. So there's no benefit in, in feeding life. Um, and you're also limiting yourself to food on logistics. Now you've got to drive around every week or two, um, asking around to multiple groups, who's got a rat for me, who's got mice for me, um, where... I was sitting on my couch last night um, thinking how times have changed. I was sitting, putting in an online rodent order that's getting delivered to me in a polystyrene box with dried eyes, packaged to my needs, um, five medium rats or 10 large rats in a pack. And I just take it out, thaw it out, feed as it suits my program for the species that I need to, to benefit uh, the snake as much as possible and to get all my... Um, priority straight on them. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about transition. Uh, live feedings, it's illegal, yes, but you can pre-kill the rat or mice or whatever prey item you're feeding outside of the enclosure humanely. Um, you can use the pulling the head, pulling the tail, breaking the spine method, pretty humane, um, or you can put them, you can build your own homemade um, gas chamber, we can actually use um, food grade CO2, those soda stream bottles, for example, 
CO2 to put them to sleep, extremely humane, and you can immediately take it and offer it to the snake um, as a food item. Um, when you get a snake that's been feeding live, uh, and we've, we've got a lot of them, we've never had the urge to uh, or the need to feed live. We immediately go over to stunt freshly pre-killed prey items. It's just the way you offer it. And when I say the way you offer it is um, when you offer a prey item, do it like the prey item would approach the snake or the snake would approach the, the prey item in a natural environment from the front or from the bottom. Um, if you're going to approach it from the top saying, well, here's a rat or here's a mouse, the problem is predators attack snakes from the top. Um, and you might turn a feeding reaction into a self-defense reaction. I'm stressing out the snake and you're back to square one. So when offering pre-killed prior items, always from the front or from the bottom. Once you've done a couple of um, pre-killed feeding sessions and you can see the snake's getting comfortable, it's getting a stronger feeding reaction, then I would recommend go over to Frozen Thought. Frozen Thought is, number one, make sure that uh, it's completely thawed out. There's no frozen pockets inside the cavity of the prey item. And number two, about 10 minutes before your feeding time, either use a hairdryer or um, natural sunlight to just give the prey item a heat signature if you're going to be feeding snakes that's got heat receptors. Okay. Um, also, when thawing out, guys, do not use warm water. Um, or excessive heat because excessive heat and warm water actually destroys protein. So you're actually destroying the nutrient value of a rat or mouse when you're thawing it out too hot. Um, so what I do is I've got, I've got my feeding tray. It's basically just a simple plastic serving tray and I put my rodents out in the morning and I thaw them out. Normally in the mornings, I take out my medium and larger rats, and then from about 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I take out my adult mice, small rats, and smaller, and then about an hour before, I'll take pinkies. You'll work out, you'll, you'll discover, depending on where and how you're thawing out, what thaws out and in which, time, in which time frames. A pinky mouse can't be taken out with a jumbo rat, and you expect them to be the same nutrient quality that afternoon. Um, the pinky is going to start decaying, and... and um, lose its nutritional value. Um, so just remember that when thawing out. So once you've done pre-killed, uh, two or three meals, get the confidence up of the snake, um, then immediately transition over to a heat signature, frozen thought item. Offer that, if you see that feeling reaction is also now getting straight. You should be at a stage where just introducing a normal frozen thought room temperature prey item to that enclosure, the snake should be able to be uh, very comfortable taking it as a normal prey item like it did since day one. Okay, so that's a transitioning process that I always recommend to guys that, that got a snake and that's, that's used to live feedings. Also, when I say transition um, between from you've got a live feeder, now we've put it on pre-killed, now we're going to frozen thought, there's another transition period where I just want to touch briefly on. Uh, for our breadly, spith breadly pythons, for example, they do pretty well on fuzzy mice in the beginning, and then we transition them over to rats. But I do get one or two hatchlings every single season that they so used to that scent of a mouse that they struggle getting over to rats. Like, what's this now? This is something new. They're a bit shy. Um, it's very simple. Um, offer the prey item. Let's say I've always been feeding mice. Offer a rat. It doesn't take it. Have a mouse thawed out on standby. Physically just rub the rat so that he, that, that smell signature goes onto the rat and offer it, scent it. And that should be able to get them going. If there's anything, if you're struggling a bit more, just keep on, just keep on repeating the process. Work out um, the mistakes. Um, if you see the snake is nervous, um, leave the prey item in front of the height, just put it down and move away, close the enclosure and come back in an hour or two and see if he's taken it. Sometimes you get shy eaters, um, they they know it's a rat, but they've had a traumatic experience or they're just um, new to the whole frozen thaw thing. Sometimes they come out and they drag it in, they eat it by the I actually lost you guys there for a second. <laughs> the camera actually failed on me. Um, so what I was saying is uh, the snake will actually just take the food item and eat it by its own. The, the biggest thing with, with, with new keepers is that we 
tend to be impatient and everything needs to happen now. And snakes have got their own little agenda game. They work on their own time. So just just be patient. Give it time. There's nothing that says the snake must eat now and try and force it. You're just going to stress it out. So give the guy a little time to establish, work out what it prefers, what it doesn't prefer. Um, I get feeders. They launch out of the cage, grab the prey items and... Two months down the line, they're extremely shy. I need to leave the dead prey item in front of the, the enclosure. One of my wellness actually did that for quite a while. And she just drags it in each of her own time. And now she's back on launching at me and trying to bite me in the face, um, being a typical Woma. Um, so, guys, if you think I've missed anything, please leave it in the comments and we'll discuss that. And if there's anything that you guys feel that we can discuss more often uh, or something that we haven't discussed before that you'd like to get more information of, please let us know. And we will actually work on that and see that we we get to that. There's, there's still a whole list of things that we've got planned um, for the show to get information over to you guys and make just life better for all reptile keepers, um, hopefully. Um, but that's it for today. Please remember to subscribe and like our channel. And if you guys feel that you don't agree with anything or something that, that we've missed, leave it in the comments and we will actually um, take it further in the comments. It's just impossible to get all the information over in one go. All right, guys, that's it for today. Have a great day and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>